Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video will be a quick video on something that is very important to your character growth in TBC. Something I don't see people talking too much about, and also there's no videos out there about these yet, so here it is. Let's talk about Badges of Justice. Whether you already know what badges are, or you need a refresher, we're going to go over everything. Why they're important, how to get them, and of course where to spend these Badges of Justice, which from here on out I will refer to as Badges. So, what are Badges? Simply put, badges are a unique and very important currency introduced in TBC used to purchase powerful gear, including weapons, trinkets, offhands, necklaces, primal nethers, shields, cloaks, relics, gems, some PvP gear, and even some resistance gear needed for certain bosses in the raids. Why they are important? Well, badges are important for many reasons. To start, the gear selection offers a complete set of items for group PvE and for all classes and builds, ranging from Karazhan level quality up to items surpassing even Black Temple raid drops. Every class has best items that they are going to use in T4 raids, and many of those classes still use some of these items further into T5 and even T6. Badge gear is also used as a catch-up mechanic for alts as well, or anyone who hasn't been lucky enough to get raid drops yet. Not all the badge items are good, however a lot of these items are good enough to catch up any alts you plan to play and get them geared up enough to slide into the raids, where you can continue to hunt down the better gear. As you can imagine, some bosses need resistances to be able to survive certain abilities, or in this example, to tank them. In the first raid of tier 5, Serpent Shrine Cavern, otherwise known as SSC, you'll need a warlock to tank one of the phases of the bosses named Leotheris. That warlock needs a mass amount of fire resistance. Your tanks also will need fire res gear to tank Illidan and Black Temple as well, which they can only achieve by purchasing all the gear that has fire resistance that the badge vendor offers. At a later patch, more badge items get released and new vendors become available. I'll get to that in a little bit. As you can imagine, these vendors offer even more powerful gear, weapons, gems, and even design patterns. Much of this gear becomes bis until you can get raid drops. And once again, as you can imagine, is another catch mechanic for many alts. How to get them? Just like the other special currencies in Burning Crusade, badges are not just handed out by everybody and can be more of a nuisance to get than others, especially if you're one of those classes that needs a handful of badge pieces or like an alt. Badges can only drop in a few ways, and each way depends on the patch. I'll list each way and the patch they release in, However, it's safe to assume that Blizzard will not launch TBC with all of these vendors available. One of which, which is also the most popular way and what will be available at launch regardless of the patch Blizzard decides on and is the most popular way to obtain badges is through heroics. Each boss of every heroic in the game will drop one badge for everyone in the party. This is the main reason everybody will spamming heroics outside the gear upgrades, of course. Another way to get them, which launches in patch 2.3, also known as the Zula Moon patch. Badges are just to start to drop from Karazhan as well. And of course, ZA. Some bosses in raids only drop one, depending on their difficulty, but most drop two and even up to three if it's the last boss. This massively boosts your ability to stock up on badges, with Karazhan becoming the best way to farm those badges. Something else added in the 2.3 patch is the ability to do daily quests that reward badges to justice. On top of getting your badges for doing this content, the quest will add some more for you. The main one being your heroic daily quest that has you simply go into a certain heroic, kill the last boss, and once you turn the quest in, you receive two badges. There's also two quests located outside of ZA that give you badges for killing the last two bosses in ZA, with a reward total of 15 badges. And lastly, a quest that you can get to clear out all of Mana Tombs for 5 badges. However, you must be exalted with Consortium Rep to do this. With patch 2.4, also known as the Sunwell patch, the Sunwell Isle is now open and available. With it came many additions to the game, but all we care about is for this video is that it allows you to obtain badges of justice from every boss in the raid that you previously could not obtain them from. That's right, every raid boss and heroic boss drops badges, and at a good time too, because this new set of badge gear is much, much, much more expensive than the previous vendor. With the same 2.4 patch, you may be able to get a badge somewhat unreliably by completing the Shattered Sun Offensive Quests, also known as the Sunwell Isle Quests. These quests reward you with the Shattered Sun Supplies Bag that has a very low chance to contain a badge, but could be worth if you're in a desperate need for badges. So as you guys can see, there's many ways to get badges in the game, but don't worry, because they're not all going to be released at launch because that would be super lame if blizzard did that but at the same time we don't know what blizzard's doing so but uh, it that's the safest bet i would say is that all those are not going to be available you're just going to start the game at launch which farming her up for some heroics and then move on to the further patches my guys now what's the best way to get badges you say well there's not really any secret way to get mass amounts of badges since they really can only come from heroics starting out so simply just spam heroics Remember, heroics can only be cleared once a day, so get ready to live inside heroics. Of course, there are heroics that are easier than others, and some skips that make them faster clears, thus quicker to get a few badges. Dungeons like Slight Pins, Underbog, Steam Vaults, Shadow Labs, Sethic Halls seem to yield the easiest badges and fast heroic clears, while steering away from heroics like Old Hillsbrad Foothills, 
Architrast, Botanica, Shattered Halls, and all those more difficult heroics people tend to have trouble in or spend a lot of time in, thus making it longer to get the badges. Of course, as soon as the 2.3 ZA patches release, Karazhan then becomes the best farm for badges, like I said, dropping a total of 22 badges. The ZA raid as well drops 13 badges total for an easy way to get badges since ZA is pretty easy and rather quick to do. It goes without saying, but as the 2.4 Sunwell patch IL is released, badges will be much, much easier to farm. As like I said, they will drop from all the raid bosses now. So now let's figure out where you want to spend these. As mentioned earlier, badges adjusters are traded to vendors for gear. There are four different vendors that you can purchase your gear from. They're released on different patches, as mentioned earlier. Garas is the first and only one that you will be visiting for a while. He is located right smack dab in the middle of Shat City. He sells excellent gear early game that will be best for many classes, including the fire resistance gear I spoke about earlier. And even towards end game, these pieces of gear will be a great catch up mechanic for your alts. With patch 2.3, he received new loot as well to add to his long list of badge gear. Make sure you familiarize yourself with him as you can expect to be visiting him frequently during your adventures in Outlands. The following three vendors will not be available until the 2.4 Sunwell Isle patch, but we're going to bring them up anyway. First one is Kyrie, located right here on top of the tower, and she sells PvP gear, equivalent to Season 2, which is pretty nice. If you have a lot of badges to spend, this is a great way to catch up on some starter PvP gear. Second one is Smith Haltha, located right nearby Kyrie. This vendor is special because she has gear that is equivalent to Black Temple raid loot. Anywhere from weapons, gear, and accessories. Take note that these pieces are the most expensive pieces of badge gear in the game, ranging anywhere from 50 to 150 badges for one piece of loot. But very worth if you are in desperate need of an upgrade and not having luck in the actual raid with loot. The third and last vendor is Shanai. She becomes available once players have retaken the harbor and created the alchemy lab as part of the Shattered Sun storyline. She offers six types of uncut epic gems that only people who were doing T6 content even had access to up until now and for rather cheap prices, only 15 badges. Note that these uncut gems are the best gems in the game that everyone, literally everybody uses and typically are pretty expensive on the auction house as well. Side note, there are these two vendors right here located next to the portal of chat that takes you to the aisle, right? These vendors, as you can see, carry the same badge gear as the Smith and the uncut gem vendor. Now, I know that these were here originally in TBC. However, I'm not sure if they became a 2.4 or a little bit later after you cleared the quests. Well guys, that's it for this video. Just a real quick short one because there's not much to talk about. It's just the badges. I just wanted to get you guys a grasp of how the badges of justice work. Hopefully I didn't take too much of your time. And now you have a good grasp of how the badges of justice work. As always, if I missed anything, please let me know in the comments and I'll pin the message. Catch me over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash underscore if you're looking for some solid TBC content. Until next time, peace guys.